The Crash Bandicoot series is one of my favorite things that come out of that era of gaming. They're very simplistic games, but what makes up for their simplicity is their high difficulty. Yeah, uh, these games are not easy. I can go through them no problem while getting every gem and crystal now, even the original Crash one, but that took a lot of practice. The thing is, I don't really know of any other 3D platformer that challenged me to this level, for the most part. That might have been a little too far in that one specific case. And I think that's partly because most of them don't focus on platforming to the extent Crash does. Crash Bandicoot is basically a 3D platformer designed like a 2D one, so that ends up allowing it to focus on pure platforming over exploration. That and it's just, you know, hard. There were some games released during Crash's peak that also were hallway platformers like Crash, but most of them weren't very good and nowhere near as hard. However, there is an indie game releasing in Steam Early Access called Bill, which is very clearly modeled after Crash and is, believe it or not, even harder than Crash and it's not even close. Yeah, this is not a finished game, not all the levels are available and what is there isn't done. There's even a bunch of WIP signs littered around the map near some of the later levels. Because of that, this isn't a full review. I'll probably get to doing that sometime after the game officially comes out, but for now I'm just gonna do another one of those a quick look at videos. So I guess that's a series in this channel now. Before I do that, I would like to thank the dev of this game, Bad Vertex, for giving me earlier access to this early access game. I'm very small, so I haven't had that done for any commercial games, so this feels good. Follow them on Twitter, this game is cool and so are they. So I already established this game is inspired by Crash Bandicoot, but when I say Crash Bandicoot, at least in a lot of areas, I do specifically mean Crash Bandicoot. You know, as in the first game, on top of being a hallway platformer, it has the Crash 1 moveset, as in you can only run, jump, and kick, no slide of any kind, and I find that kind of disappointing. Because to me, that's one of the major reasons I prefer Crash 2 so much over the original. It adds a certain level of flow, raises the skill ceiling considerably, and just makes the game a lot more enjoyable to me overall. I know this isn't Crash, so maybe I shouldn't compare it so much to the sequels, I'm just saying, I like the slide jump a lot, so it'd be nice nice to have some kind of equivalent. Though, if I'm being honest, I feel kind of bad immediately jumping into a negative like that, because otherwise this game does control very, very well. It's super tight. And it's not like the lack of any kind of slide jump equivalent is necessarily a bad thing, this is just my perspective. Wanting to focus on simplicity, even in the controls, is completely valid. There's also no crates, instead you just need a certain amount of collectibles, it changes depending on the level, to get in each stage, with an NPC at the end giving you a reward of some kind. I honestly don't know what it is if I'm being honest. I only did it once both because this game is hard and because this game does that crash one thing where you can't get a lot of the collectibles in your first go around. I tried so hard to get in the second stage by making jumps the game clearly didn't want me to make, and it actually worked more than you'd think, but I still couldn't get in everything. I also got really close in this alien level, but of course I missed exactly one. Glad that's still a thing. They also kept the backtracking segments, and yeah, can't say I'm a fan of that. Those parts were always my least favorite parts in Crash. I, I just do not enjoy slowly inching close to the camera and not being able to see what's ahead of me. At least it doesn't seem to be as common as it is in Crash. I mean, I say this as someone who didn't 100% this, so maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Oh, and uh, despite my Crash 1 comparisons earlier, don't worry, checkpoints save your collectibles. <laughs> Thank you. Another thing separating it from Crash would be the lack of Aku Aku or a health system of any kind. You're always a one-hit kill, which obviously makes things a lot less manageable. Also, this game's level design is just kind of ridiculous, but I mean that in a very good way. The 3D platformer genre is not something that is able to challenge me all that often, and I'm not saying that because these games are the one thing I'm good at in life so my ego is inflated. No, it's just not a genre that attempts to be all that hard very often. Obviously there's hard parts in plenty of games, but I wouldn't call those games hard overall. Crash is the only one that is hard, but this game puts even that to shame. I must have died thousands of times in this recording alone. There's just so many tight sections that demand so much precision, 
and it's very rarely unfair. I'm just, I'm just happy to see a hard 3D platformer. Why are these so rare? Like hard 2D ones everywhere, but what about 3D? Why? Come on. What I'm saying is, I love it. Except the boss fights, or more specifically the second one. The first one was very hard, but I never felt like beating it was an impossibility. It was maybe kind of trial and error heavy, but still fun, challenging, and had a checkpoint in the middle, so there was some leniency. I straight up gave up on the second fight. Your goal is to destroy all of these computer chips on this moving motherboard. This is already hard because a motherboard is moving but your jump doesn't move with it, so you end up jumping so much farther than what you'd expect, and you have to destroy every chip. If you don't, the game continues on anyway. And you just kinda have to survive long enough for the game to loop back to that spot, which is so much harder. Especially because this is already some of the tightest jumps I've seen in this game. Eventually the fight gets to the end of the motherboard and just starts moving in the opposite direction, so not only are you going against a camera with significantly harder level design, but your jumps are also shorter because, again, your jumps don't move with the floor. And at least when I recorded most of the footage, there was no checkpoint, so every time I finally got to the first hit, which is already a really hard thing to do, I would die almost immediately afterwards because you just don't have the time to get used to that jump. I tried, this fight is just way too much for me. And it's the second one, I cannot imagine how much more brutal this game gets later. However, the dev did tell me to make sure I'm playing on the most recent version of the game for this video because it gets updated frequently. I feel bad because I haven't really been doing that at all, both because I just haven't run into many issues in the build I recorded so I didn't feel like it was super necessary, but also because it's just not an easy thing to do with scripted videos, especially with how long I take to make these sometimes. Sorry by the way. But because he told me that, I did go back and download what's the most current version of the game that came out while writing this, I mean. Could have changed by now, probably has actually. Again, sorry dev. Anyway, I checked to see if this boss has changed and thankfully, it has. It's still brutal, but they added checkpoints after every hit and oh my god, thank you. This went from a fight that would force me to sacrifice my sanity in order to beat it to a very hard fight that I could probably eventually do. I admittedly still haven't beaten it, but that's mostly because playing every level available just isn't necessary for this kind of video. I don't want to make my eventual full review of this game too repetitive is all I'm saying. Aside from all that gameplay stuff, there's some other cool stuff to talk about. The visuals in this game clearly are going for a PS1 style, which I appreciate because I think it looks cool and I just said a couple of videos ago I want more games to look like this. It does tend to give me stronger Spyro vibes than Crash though, both because it tends to not be as detailed as Crash and because some of the colors remind me a lot of Spyro, especially in this level. The theming is pretty cool too, a lot of variety, I'm especially a fan of the Cornfield Alien level. I love when games use this as a level theme, even in that poopy Spyro game. You can also play with filters that make it look like it's being played off an actual PS1. Like you got this cleaner PS1 resolution filter and then you also have this crappy composite one. I don't see myself ever using these, but for those who do like this stuff, this is a cool addition. I wouldn't touch it, but if they wanted to take this even further, a 4x3 mode would also be really cool to see. Another cool thing is, there's some costumes, there's a lot of unlockable ones, which I didn't unlock any, but thankfully, you also have some right out of the gate, and the cool thing is, they are all references to other characters from the PS1. There's Lara Croft, obviously Crash himself, but also Zera from Zera Miss Awaken, which is basically a Spyro version of this, and uh, that game looks so cool, please check that out too. These are some really cool costumes, though since we have both Crash and Zera, I think a Spyro one would be cool. I'm positive I'm not the first person to request that, but I'm doing it anyway. Honestly, this video ended up being a lot longer than I thought for a quick look at video, but hey, it's a cool game and if you're a fan of Crash or hard 3D platformers, check it out. It's going to be available on Steam and Early Access on December 7th, so definitely wishlist it and get it when you can. I understand not wanting to buy a game that's not finished, so if you're not going to buy it now, at least keep up with development. It's a cool game that deserves attention. Obviously, like I said, there's a Twitter account, but there's also a Discord, so there you go. Links will be in the description.